Yorkshire versus Berkshire, the last game before the World Cup and VIP tickets for my mother's birthday. Yes, today is massive as Hull City take on Reading in the 21st round of the most competitive league in the world, the EFL Championship. The Tigers on the back of two impressive away results, 50 grand Regan Slater in fine form and his nannies from Hull, Liam Rossini at the wheel, as well as the unimpressive Reading form, no win in the last four games. Now I'm not saying there's a big chance, but today we could finally lift the curse and finally win at the MKM. Oi! But as always, here's all the information you need to know about today's 3pm Saturday afternoon kickoff. Today we take a look at our visitors and Paul Ince's Reading FC. Reading started the season extremely well, with many stints at the top, but have slowly dropped down the table. Today, Reading are hoping to get their first win in four games, and for former Tigers Tom Ince and Shane Long to haunt their old team. Now, we move on to the history between the two sides, and I must say, it is really, really close. They played each other on 57 occasions, with the Tigers winning 19 times, Reading winning 18 times, and respectively 20 games that ended in a draw. <sighs> that is close. Last competitive fixture ended in a 3-0 win to the Tigers and what a day that was. Two goals by Keen Lewis Potter and somehow Alfie Jones scoring made sure the Tigers collected all three points from the MKM. I can't see it happening today but we have to keep optimistic. Today we're at the MKM, home of the Tigers and there to back the boys in black and amber so we won't be adding any to our season total mileage keeping it at 2,417 miles but like I said at the start it is my mother's birthday. Happy birthday, mum. Thanks for everything. Hope you're enjoying the vlog. But somehow I bargained us and entered a competition and got us in the Corridon Lounge, which means I'm not allowed to wear my replica shirt. I get padded seats. And the main thing, we get free food. As you can tell, I like food. Then that's enough from me at my home. I will see you once we arrive in Sunny Hall there to back the boys in black and amber. Go on, Hull. Keep some optimism. Up the Tigers. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hello and welcome to the MKM Stadium here in Hull and I've snuck out the hospitality, the Corridon Lounge, to come here and do my match day vlog. Now it's the first game under the Liam Rossini era here at the MKM. We know we have a bad record at home. We never seem to win at home. We hardly win away, but we don't care. We're all city, but I'm not going to keep waffling. Without further ado, here's your lineup to take on Reading FC. In goal, Nathan Baxter, the captain as usual at left back, Jacob Greaves. The two centre backs are Alfie Jones and Tobias Figueredo. Right back, Cyrus Christie. The four in midfield are Greg Doherty, Ryan Woods, John Mikel Seri, and 50 grand Regan Slater. And the two up front today, Demetrius Pelkas and Ryan Longman. Now it is the lineup most Hull City fans were expected. It's the same around that it has been for the past two or three games under Liam Rossini. But I do feel bad for Ozan too, fan. Maybe because he is a friend of mine and I know him a little bit. But I think he really needs to start. I think the quality he brings in the midfield, he may be a bit lazy and off the ball is probably the worst at the club. But on the ball, he is the best at the club. He can make the passes that no one else can see. It's just, I don't know. I think it's Liam Rossini seeing through his laziness. Same with Cynic. I have no idea why he's not playing. I think Liam Rossini is just sticking to what he knows at the moment. But I'm not him, so I couldn't tell you. But Cynic controlled the game when he comes on. He's a bit like, a bit of a Gareth Bale sort of thing. Comes on, controls the game, but he doesn't get enough minutes. Now, unfortunately, due to the new rules, Joe and Lucas aren't able to do score predictions at home anymore, but we have got the usual. We got Leo. Yep. Now, Leo, have you had any food today? Not yet. Not yet. You're you looking forward to burger. I have. I've had a mini burger in the lounge and it was beautiful. But, Leo, I'm going to ask you a quick question, mate. What's your score prediction? So, I'm going to go big and bold. <laughs> big and bold. Maybe 4 1 C. What have you been on me? <laughs> 4-1 City. I've had a... What, what am I going to wear? I mean, Alfie Jones actually. No, I mean, Cyrus <laughs> Christie's going to be on the score sheet. Cyrus again. Christie. You know what? I do it every week and I say Cyrus isn't going to score. So this time I am going to say he's going to score. No, he's not going to score. <laughs> he isn't though. But I don't want to jinx myself because I look like a right Wally in the last one. We're also joined here. Yeah, hiya. Hiya, you alright mate? Yeah. Right, are you optimistic? Yeah, I am actually. So what are we going to go for? I'm going to go for 3-0 uh, soon. 3-0 City, who are we going to go for? Uh, I'm going to go for Oscar, I'm going to go for Tyler Smith, and I'm going to go for uh, Size Christie, it's going to get on the score seat again. <laughs> and I'm going to go um. see 
This is Jacob Greed. He's going to get a non scotch as well. Now, you know what? Very bold predictions here today. Now, I can tell you now, I'm not going to say this because I know it's probably going to happen, but Jacob Greaves is not scoring. Cyrus maybe, but not Jacob Greaves. Now, I am going to go back to my lounge. I'm going to enjoy my mini burger and some chips. I'm going to go watch the rest of the Brentford versus Man City game, which is currently 1 1. Get Keno on the pitch. He's going to score a hat trick. And I'm going to enjoy the rest of the hour until kickoff. It's my mother's birthday, so we're going to try and enjoy it and have a chat with Greg Doherty. So, if the goals are the right size, the pitch is the right length, the weather's okay and all things are alright in the crowd. I will see you at kickoff. You know what, I haven't done these score predictions. I'm gonna go 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I'm not optimistic either. I'll see you at kickoff. And here we have it. Paul City versus Reading in the 21st round of the championship. Liam Rossini gets a round of applause and a cheer from everyone at the MKM. And it's Reading to kickstart the first half. And it's the former Tiger himself, Tom Ince. Hopefully he doesn't score, but we do have a record. A former player scoring. Go on, City. Go on, then. Go on, then. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't believe this. I've said it at the intro again. It's going to happen, but Jacob Graves is not scoring. Score and he has. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe this, my luck. Eight minutes in. I said it at the start when we were doing score predictions. Jacob Greaves won't score and he has. I'll tell you what, I don't know what's happening, but the first thing Liam Rossini has been doing is working on them corners. We've had two corners and two really good opportunities and we've took it and we've made it count. And he scored his second goal in about two weeks. I don't believe him. Wow. Incredible atmosphere in the North Stand. I tell you what, it's not a bad view either. Nineteen minutes and then I'll tell you what, this is the best we've played at home for months. I'm not saying the curse has finally been broken, but there's a good chance. Although Ryan Longman's not playing well and Liam Rossini is shouting at him a lot. I think the rest of the team's played really well, but both teams have had their opportunities, but as I've said, Huller edging it and Huller the better team at the moment if we keep it as it is. There's a chance we might get the three points, eh? It's not a dream. But still a long way to go. There's a real buzz around the stadium, the atmosphere is a lot more electric. Still can't get a chant out of the West Stand, but the North Stand, as always, chanting their lungs out. I think in the Zulu Lima Seniors here is a legend at Hull City. His nan is from Hull. I think we finally got some more spirit back into the club. A bit more cheerful. It is nearly Christmas. Three minutes in and Regan Slater has an open net, tries to do a few tricks and well, you saw what happened. Still on the attack though. No. Oh. oh, here we go. Oh, Nathan Baxter. 30 minutes in and the last 10 minutes has been nothing between them. I think it's 52 to 48 in possession to Wall City. I mean, there's barely been anything to report about. They've had one shot, we've had a couple of opportunities that we really should have taken and buried, but hindsight's a wonderful thing. As you can hear, the North Stand one in ole, 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 Ozan Tufan on the pitch, but by the looks of it, it's not going to happen. Um, yeah, they've just scored. Oh, wow, that's shocking, that. Poor corner comes into the box, no one heads it out, goes straight to the back post and I don't even know who it was. Number eight, back post, easy finish, practically a tap in for him. Back to square one and they've got the momentum. And to be fair, the Reading fans that have travelled aren't going mental. Here we go again. Here we go again. 35th minute and there's a free kick for Reading. Yeah. Quite a hard angle to shoot from, but it is Tom in, so who knows? Take after his dad. Nope, we don't shoot. And that's gone absolutely nowhere. 
Why is that really? Awful challenge up by Jeff Hendricks and Ryan Woods. By the looks of it, Ryan Woods is really, really hurt. But then again, nowadays footballers will go down for anything. But it did look like an awful challenge. There's a really strong possibility that it will be a red card, which is deserved and it will be very good for us as well. But I think it's just a warning. As you can hear, the fans want him off. And I must say, it deserves at least a yellow card, maybe even more. And Seri's, Seri's taking his shirt off. I ain't got a clue, mate. I don't know what's happening. And it's just a yellow card. 43rd minute and there's been nothing between the two sides. Honestly, if it wasn't for the goals, it'd be a very boring game, honestly. I think we haven't let our heads drop. We've had two or three opportunities to get back into the lead, and I think half time we do need a very good team talk by Liam Rossini, which we know we can do. I mean, Cardiff obviously will 1 0 up at the break, but that second half, that Regan Slater was magic. I think for me, we do need a change. Cynicon for Ryan Longman. Ryan Longman took a knock about 10 minutes in. He seems alright, but Cynic brings magic into the game. He may not know the championship well, but. This minute and there's been three minutes of added time. I don't think a lot will happen in the three minutes, but it seems I contradict myself every time I say something. I don't know why I'm playing Slater at left midfield. I think he works better as a box to box centre mid. Well, that's not to complain. He scored two last week. Up the Tigers. See you at half time. There we have it. Half time 1 1. A lot of positives to take. We're playing a lot more well defensively. But apart from that, it's been very boring. I'll see you all when I'm in my lounge having a mince pie up the time. Half time and it's 1-1 one, one here. And I'll tell you what, this is the best I've seen Hull City play for months. The way we're passing it round. We aren't making mistakes at the back. We're not passing it back. And defensively wise, Tobias Figueredo has turned into the next Sergio Ramos. But I am a bit over exaggerating a bit there. On to the first goal and Jacob Greaves. I mean, a lot of people still have bets on him. I think they've made a fortune there. Two goals in like two or three games. It's class, honestly. And then obviously they scored, which was a great goal there. Number eight scored and I can't knock it. The way Reading are playing at the moment, it's especially the long balls that we look quite scared about. I mean, they're playing it wide. They're knocking it round. The long ball, Jacob Greaves doesn't know what to do. And that's how they got their goal. They're just playing it sleek football. And that's what we need to work on. But in a whole, defensively, we're doing well. In the midfield, we're making a lot of mistakes. I mean, Regan Slater played absolutely fantastic against Cardiff. I don't know what's happened today. He's had two opportunities, easy tapping. He's had a few passes. He's tried to do the trick passes instead of the, you know, simple one-twos. But then again, you can't knock in. 50 grand, what a bargain. Now I am going to have to keep this short and sweet because the Tigers are already back out on the pitch. I went for a pie, you see. A lovely pie in the lounge, but I think I prefer it down in front row. That's where I am at the moment. But in terms of the second half, we've got some really quality players on the bench. You've got Ozan, you've got Cynic, and you've got quite a lot of the players, you know, that can really make a difference. But we have to just keep hope. I mean, Liam Racine, your masterclass team talk, and we're back like we were against Cardiff, dominating the game and getting the three points. I'm sorry I've had to keep this half time bit short, but I'll see you all in second half when I'm back at the padded seat, which is held together by Sellity. 55th minute, and I think one thing we really need to work on is to know when we should hit the counter attack because there's been four or five occasions where the Reading team have fully, you know, pushed up the field and Nathan Bats has caught the ball and he's waiting six or seven seconds looking around before he releases the ball. Whereas if you get pushed the ball, find the run, find the pass, and you know, we're off on the way, we're on the counter attack, we've got the pace up front. We've got, you know, we've got Cynic on the bench. He's very quick, he's rapid. We bring him on, we know when to hit the counter-attack, and we can finish the ball, we know we can. Obviously, Oscar's not on the pitch, but Ryan Longman knows how to shoot. May take him a couple of chances and hit the ball in the Rose Z first, but we can get them opportunities. And I think it's not just Nathan Baxter, but there's a few times when Seri's got the ball and he's just dribbling it. He's wandering around the pitch when he could really find the pass, and yeah, you know what I mean. I should stop waffling now. Still doing well, though. Oh, Slater. I'll tell you what, 
Looks like it's not played great, but Tobias Figueredo. It's like a totally new man. So the first substitution of the game is about to happen. And when I say first, three players are coming on. Triple substitution for all City. Ozan Tufan, Dohan Sinek and Louis Coyle all coming onto the pitch. I presume it'll be Cyrus, maybe Regan Slater, and then Ryan Longman coming off. But I can't say that for definite, but it's just not often we bring three players on. And the three very deadly players. I mean, you've got your club captain on the bench and two players who were playing in Champions League two years ago. I'll tell you what, you look at our team, we've got a real valuable squad. It's a shame we do nothing with it. The football we're playing at the moment. I feel like I'm watching Prime Barcelona. And I say it a lot, but today has been one of the best in terms of passing it round. We're doing very well. And now we have it first substitution. Coming off is Ryan Woods. Obviously took a massive knock in the first half. And coming on is Ozan Tufan. The Turkish maestro, as expected as well. Cyrus Christie's getting taken off. I don't think he's done enough to be taken off, but then I don't think he's done enough to stay on. It's been a very sort of average performance. We know what Cyrus can do, we know he can shoot, and obviously they'll be disappointed not to be on the pitch for the full 90, but Louis Coyle needs a chance. Obviously, he was ill and missed a couple of games, Cyrus comes in, and also the third and final substitution at this time, Dohan Sinek coming on for Demetrius Belkas. Poor Demetrius. Poor guy can never get full 90. But Cynic can do something, hopefully. 65th minute, we're playing really, really well, but I can, I can just see something really bad happening. You now, usually I'm told to keep optimism, to keep optimistic, but the amount of chances we've had, and the amount of mistakes we've made, Ozan Tuban had a simple two yard pass and gives it straight to them on the edge of our box. Now, I hope we do win, and I hope we do score soon, but if we don't take our chances, and it could turn into a very awful day on my mum's birthday as well. How are you feeling, mum? I'm enjoying it. I don't know what happened, but I think it was a better place. I tell you what, Andy Carroll's been around for a long time. He's about six foot seven. He's a striker. And he's wearing a number two shirt. Not something you see often, but let's hope he does nothing against us. Doesn't score. And if he does, I hope it's offside. Sorry Andy, nothing personal mate, I just, I'd like to see a win at home at one point. All the best mate. Oh, blooming eh? Oh. 75th minute and I'll tell you what, there's been five or six times my heart stopped. How shaky we are being in the past 10, 15 minutes defensively wise. I mean, we try and drive forward, look for opportunities, we don't, we pull it back, by then they've caught up with us and then we try and lose it, it's just poor. I mean, first 65 minutes, so I can't fault Figueredo has been, if not man of a match so far. But the game's not over. There's still 15 minutes, and whoever scores next is almost guaranteed to get the three points because it's been so dull. There's just nothing to talk about. We're losing it. Appeals of the handball all around the MKM Stadium, and it's another real poor pass by Nathan Baxter. And it's another game where it could go either way and I am starting to get very nervous 10 minutes to go and the nerves are starting to kick in and I'll tell you what doesn't help Nathan Baxter passing it straight to them from a goal kick it's going to be a long 10 minutes and I just have some inkling that they're going to score in the last 5 minutes crush all the whole city's hearts but keep optimism you never know Ryan Longman might score from 45 yards 85th minute, it's been very sloppy, past 10 minutes. No one really can get a foot onto the game and no one's controlling it well. But there's 16,000 there at the MKM, still very good numbers, but it is decreasing every game. And I mean, you can't blame people, but you know, two positive results. I mean, it's not awful this, we aren't losing. We could, it could be better. If we took our chances, Regan Slater took that one, we only had to pass it to the goal. Well, you know what would happen, we'd be winning. Still five or six minutes left though, plus any added time, so keep optimistic. You know, one big chance and we've won the game. Same for them as well. Go on, Sarri. Go on, Sarri. Ben! Ben! He's not giving it. I don't believe that. Oh, my. 
Anyway, there's about a minute left until football's finished until the World Cup. In my opinion, I think England might win it. I still think Jacob Gray should have been called up to the England national team. But I think it's because Liam Rossini wants him fully, fully fit for the game against Watford. So kicking off down at dugout. Assistant manager for Reading's gone and pushed Louis Coyle. Louis Coyle's got all of his strings on his jumper and pulled them. Ryan Wood starts and now they're all starting. Well, I suppose something has to be enjoyable at the football. 90th minute and there's been four minutes at a time. In the past five minutes we've been really pushing for it. We've got a foot on the game. And I think one of these opportunities we could really take. And I'll tell you what, the limbs if we score. And then he gets rolled offside. Oh dear. Go on. Wow. Wow. No way has this happened. No way has this happened. Now this isn't biased at all, but Reading haven't done anything for 10, 15 minutes. And the away fans are broken in. The home fans even. So, so poor. Dominated for the past 10, 15 minutes. We deserved all three points. And they've done it. In the dying 30 seconds, they've done it. I'm absolutely gutted for them. Oh, it's so, so poor. There's May maybe 30 seconds, a minute left of the game. Well, fair play to the Reading fans. They've won it, they're happy. And I suppose it won't be an awful trip back down to London with the three points. <sighs> well, that's football. Oh, please, figs. Turn into Mini Messi. That's it. Oh. Booze echo around the MKM, but to be fair, half the, half the stadium's emptied. As soon as that goal went in, it's about game over. Fair play to the Reading fans. They did well, but what a poor result that is. We dominated big parts of that game, and as I said before, if we don't take our chances, it's going to come back and bite us on the bum. Oh. No football for a month now, but we get to watch England to keep positives. I'll see you all when I get home. Up the Tigers. Oh dear me. Well, well, well. Let's try and keep a smile on my face. Hull City 1. Heartbreak. Reading 2. No, we deserve better than that. We deserve the three points. Maybe not, but maybe we deserve definitely a draw from that. And it was heartbreaking. Honestly, what, 30 seconds left? They get a header in. It's a known goal from Ryan Longman. And it's crushed all our hearts, honestly. I thought today was a day. The home curse finally gets lifted. We finally win at home. There was a bit of a buzz around the stadium. Liam Rossini's first game in charge at the MKM. But no, we got, uh, well, humbled. In terms of the performance, and I think today was absolutely incredible. Now, maybe when people haven't watched the game, they look at the stats, you may think, wow, that was a boring game. And yes, it was. But passing it back, we didn't do as much. Tobias Figueredo, he's the next Sergio Ramos. Honestly, today, doing all the tricks and skills, nice one-two passing, header in it, clearing it. He had a man-of-the-match performance against Millwall. And today, wow, honestly, mate, the improvement since Swansea, he got booed off the pitch, didn't play for three weeks, got dropped, and now it's probably our best centre-back. But if I was Liam Rossini, and I know he knows better than most of us, but I would put Ozan and Cynic on the pitch. Now, Cynic didn't get a lot of the ball today because we were playing it more to Louis Coyle this time, but when he did have the ball, he did some skills, he got past the players, he just needs to work on his crossing because he always hits it front post. But apart from that, really well. And Ozan, he has had some very sloppy passes, but... It's all because he hasn't played in four weeks, and I know he will be training a lot. But if he is to get into the team, he needs to stop being lazy. Because on the ball, he's the best at the club. And maybe even one of the best in the championship. But off the ball, just wanders around the pitch, looking around. 
getting his paycheck. And I mean, fair play. But if he really does want to get back into the Turkish top leagues, play in the Premier League like he wants to, we know he does. He don't want to be right on a bench at Hull City. Then he needs to improve his game off the pitch. Now onto the fans and up until the 95th minute, the North Stand was rocking. Even the West Stand started clapping. Now you don't see that. Again, absolutely incredible. And I don't know whether it's because we've had two solid performances. There was a real buzz around the stadium today. Liam Rossini out and about. But then again, 95th minute, it just cleared out. Because honestly, who wants to watch the last 20 seconds when everyone's got their heads down? You know you've lost. Now onto the Reading fans. And it is a long drive from nearly London to Hull. Over 200 Reading fans. And when you scored that 95th minute, the limbs, and I couldn't blame you all. It was an incredible, it was a shock result in some senses. But I hope you enjoy the three points and travel safely home. I think you'll still be on the bus whilst I'm recording this. I have to feel bad. I went Millwall last week. It's a long journey. On to the next fixture, and it's on like the 18th of December or something like that. Watford away. We've got a month for the World Cup, and uh, I'm going to give you a bit of insight. Um, yeah, I'm not optimistic. I know England do well in these sort of competitions, but Southgate, I'm not totally convinced. I mean, you bring Maguire every week, and you know, Maguire was a good defender for us. I mean, he didn't start for the first couple of seasons. He had one breakout season, but... He's just not good enough for playing for England. You want to pick players who actually, you know, are in form and playing for the club. But, as that said, there won't be any match day vlogs for over a month. Now, I don't want to stop doing it for a month. I want to do something. So, if you have any ideas, because uh, I'm stumped. I don't know what to do for it next month. It's going to be heartbreaking. But if you have any ideas of what you'd like me to post on YouTube, maybe even do some England watch-alongs. But um, I can tell you now, when we lose to Iran, it's not going to be the best of videos. <laughs> Once again, thank you all so much for watching. If possible, please, can you like, subscribe, and maybe even turn on notification bell so you can see me on your screen when the latest match day vlog has been uploaded. But you don't have to. I'm not forcing you. Obviously, a good performance, but the result is a very negative-wise, heartbreaking, and a lot to improve on. But we have improved a lot since about mid-September when we were losing every week. But thank you so much again for watching and I will see you all in a month's time or maybe even closer if England actually do well. Up the Tigers and I'll see you all very soon.